This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. OPEC Plus has agreed to delay a planned December oil output increase by one month, the group said on Sunday, as weak demand notably from China and rising supply outside the group maintain downward pressure on the oil market. Eight members of OPEC Plus, which groups the organization of the petroleum exporting countries plus Russia and other allies, were due to raise output in December as part of a plan to gradually unwind the group's most recent layer of output curbs. A cut of 2.2 million barrels per day, BPD. However, weak demand and economic data raised concern in the group about adding more supply. Sources told Reuters last week ahead of the decision to postpone the hike made on Sunday after consultations between ministers. Chinese refiners are expected to reduce fuel output for the rest of the year and maintain lower run rates in the first quarter of 2025 despite a seasonal demand UPTICK, as profit margins and fuel consumption in road transport remain weak. The lower refining output in China, which has the world's largest capacity according to the Statistical Review of World Energy, is expected to cap imports by the world's top crude buyer, and may tighten domestic fuel supply and support prices. Consultancy Ristad Energy lowered its forecast for China's refining throughput to 14.7 million barrels per day, BPD, for the fourth quarter from 15 million barrels of oil per day previously, after some refiners cut runs amid weak demand, said Yi Lin, its Beijing-based analyst, without naming the refiners. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Canada will on Monday unveil the details of its long-awaited plan to cap emissions of greenhouse gases from the oil and gas sector, an idea that the energy industry and some provinces strongly oppose. A government announcement issued on Sunday said the draft plan would be released at 1 p.m., 1800 GMT, on Monday. Ottawa said last December the plan would be unveiled by the end of 2024. The Liberal government wants the energy industry, Canada's highest polluting sector, to cut emissions to 137 million metric tons, 37% below 2022 levels, by 2030. Oil prices rose about 3% on Monday on a decision by OPEC Plus to delay by a month plans to increase output, while the market braced for a crucial week that includes the U.S. presidential election. U.S. Democratic candidate Kamala Harris and Republican Donald Trump remain virtually tied in opinion polls ahead of Tuesday's election day, and the winner might not be known for days after voting ends. Brent futures were up $2.13 per barrel, or 2.9%, to $75.23 a barrel at 11.23 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude was up $2.15 a barrel, or 3.1%, to $71.64. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Prices of base metals rose on Monday on a softer U.S. dollar, but trading remained thin amid caution around the uncertainty of who will become the next U.S. president. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange rose 0.5% to $9,616.50 per metric ton by 0312 GMT, while the most traded December copper contract on the Shanghai Futures Exchange increased 0.4% to 76,780 yuan, $10,810.28 a ton. The dollar slipped as investors braced for a potential pivot this week for the global economy as the United States chooses a new leader on Tuesday and, probably, cuts interest rates again. Iron ore futures swung to gains from losses on the first working day of the week as the market keenly awaited a key meeting of the top leadership in biggest consumer China for cues on stimulus measures. China's National People's Congress Standing Committee is meeting over November 4 to 8 and all eyes are on whether more stimulus measures would be unveiled to spur the economy. The most traded January iron ore contract on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended daytime trade 0.91% higher at 779 yuan, $109.78, a metric ton, after touching the lowest since October 25 at 760 yuan and 50 fen a ton earlier in the session. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
Egypt's state grains buyer, the General Authority for Supply Commodities, GASC, said on Sunday it was seeking an unspecified amount of wheat in an international purchasing tender for the first time since August. The office deadline is November 4, submitted on a free on-board, FOB, basis with payment using 270-day letters of credit, it said. Shipping will be from November 25 to December 5 and or December 6, 15. This is the first GASC tender since an unprecedented tender on August 6. Following directives from President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, the August tender sought 3.8 million metric tons of wheat to cover half of annual wheat needs with deliveries extending to April 2025. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.